Have you ever wanted to create a Roblox game, but once you got around to the scripting side of things, you felt like you just hit a brick wall? Or maybe this isn't your first rodeo and you've tried to learn how to script before. Well, no matter how much experience or lack of experience you have when it comes to scripting, by the end of the series, you should have a fair understanding of all the fundamentals when it comes to scripting, and we can then take and use that knowledge to follow along with my Obby series, where we can continue to learn and even create our own Obby game. Now, if you ever run into issues while watching any of these guys, I would highly encourage you to check out the comment section down below, where other people might have had the same exact issue as you, or join our Discord. There's a link down below in the description because the Discord server is full of all of you guys who are currently watching this video, most likely having the exact same issue as another person. Additionally, in the description of each of these following videos, there will be some resources linked down below which also cover the subject of the video as well. So if you find yourself struggling to understand something while I explain it through the video, you could also check out a text-based guide which might explain it differently and help you understand it from that way. Okay, that's finally enough talking from me. With that all being said, let's hop into it. So today we're going to be learning about variables and I'm going to put a variable on screen for you right now so that we can have a visual representation of what we're actually talking about. So on screen right now, I put up a variable. The name of our variable is called empty box and you might have no idea where I'm going with this, but I think this is a great example. So just follow along. What is a variable? Well, technically a variable is a named storage location that can hold a value. Now, if you want to think about it more simply, you can also think of a variable as simply a box. Yes, I'm talking about a literal physical box that is able to hold items inside of it. Now imagine this scenario with me for a second now, okay? This is our variable currently on screen. We already gave a name to our variable and we decided the name is going to be empty box. Now correlating this to a literal box, imagine you have a box standing right next to you and you have a plan of what you're going to put inside of it. Today you're feeling really organized and before you even put anything into that box, you're going to take a marker and you're going to write a name on that box. Now in my scenario, let's say that I have a bunch of Roblox toys that I'm going to store away. So I'm I'm going to write the name of my box and I'm going to call that box Roblox Toys. Now I haven't put anything into it yet, so it's just an open box that I'm able to start storing stuff inside of. So in order for me to put stuff inside of that box, what I have to do is I have to use an equal sign and then I can put whatever I want into that box. So for instance, I'm going to put the number 15 into that box. And there we go. That's what I did. I just threw the number 15 into that box. So coming back to reality for a second, let's look at the structure of this variable. Right here on the left hand side of the equal sign, we have the name of our variable, which is Roblox toys. So since I don't have any toys to put inside that box, I put a different value inside of that box, which is the number 15. And remember that key word that I just used value. That is what is set on the right hand side of the equal sign. On the left hand side of the equal sign is the variable's name. And on the right hand side of the equal sign is the variable's value. So very important name and value. Now, if we look all the way to the left of the variable, we can actually see the local keyword. Local is a type of scope, but that's not worth learning about or touching on currently. Just remember that every time you want to create a variable, you're going to begin by using the keyword local. Now you should have a fair understanding of a variable structure. The most important thing, every single variable starts with the keyword local. After that, we type out the name of the variable. And if we want to create the variable with a value, we can also use an equal sign and then set the value of that variable as well. Now you of course have no ideas about the different values that we can actually set of a variable. You just need to know that this is the name and this is the value. And this is how you create a variable. Now, if you're scripting in Roblox Studio, I'm going to show you a little secret. Whenever you're scripting, you can actually use two two hyphens, and then anything you type after those two hyphens will not be counted as code. These are actually referred to as comments. So anything we type on this line specifically will not be able to be used by the script. For instance, if we try to create a variable right here, nothing would actually happen. And the color of the text is actually gray to indicate that this is just simply a comment and none of this code will actually be used. Now, comments can be super helpful. When I was just learning, I would use comments all the time when following tutorials. And then I'd write a comment throughout the script telling me what each individual thing did inside of there to give myself a better understanding. Now I'm going to be using comments in this video just to kind of give you guys a little bit of guides and tips on keywords that you should definitely know. Now a topic that we're quickly going to touch on is naming a variable. Now when it comes to naming a variable, for the most part, we're going to be using the camel case writing convention. What camel case means is that the first letter of a variable's name is going to be in lowercase and then the first letter of every word after that will be capitalized. So for instance, the first letter here is lowercase while the first letter of every word after that is capitalized. And here's an example as well. So if this was the name of a variable, then the first letter would be lowercase while the first letter of every single word after that is then capitalized. Now, another writing convention that we have is the Pascal case. And Pascal case is pretty simple to understand. The first letter of every single word is being capitalized. Now, these are the two most popular writing conventions that you're going to be using while scripting in Roblox. But for the most part, and just to start off,
off, I think that you should really master and just start off by learning Camel Case. Now you might think it's such a super simple, easy skill to learn, which yes, it definitely is an easy thing to learn, but also at the same time, when you actually use Pascal Case, it's for very specific scenarios that you're not going to know or learn for just a little bit. When it comes to Camel Case, you're going to be using this the most compared to the very few specific times that you actually use Pascal Case. Now when it comes to naming variables, there are some restrictions. Every variable must begin with a letter. So for instance, we could say this is one variable and that'll work, but the variable's name cannot start with anything apart from a letter. Additionally, you're not able to name your variable specific keywords. For instance, you're not able to name your variable local because local is a reserved keyword. Now we're going to be talking about variable types. Now Lua U has eight primitive types and we're going to be touching on four of those today. The keyword here is primitive. When you hear primitive, you can think of basic, bare bones, the most plainest of types that we actually have. Now when it comes to these specific primitive types, these types are very common and usually every single programming language has a version of these specific types. So the four types that we're going to be talking about right now is the string type, the number type, the boolean type, and finally the nil type. Now starting off with the string type, a string is technically a sequence of characters, but I like to think about it as a line of text. Now the way that we go about creating strings is usually by using double quotation marks and putting whatever characters or text you want inside of it. Now there's two other ways to make a string variable. The second way is by using single quotation marks, so we can once again say this is a string. And now the third way of creating a string is by using double back ticks. And we can once again say this is a string. Now at the end of the day, they're pretty much all the same thing. The most common way of creating a string is definitely using double quotation marks. If you ever look at other people's code, you're more than likely going to see this method of creating a string. When it comes to single quotation marks, you'll practically never see this. The only reason that I could think of people using this would be a very niche scenario. Like imagine that they wanted to use a quotation mark inside of the string. Now if we try to put that same quotation mark inside of the double quotation marks, that actually causes a red underline and that'll create an error. So like I was saying, sometimes people might use a single quotation so that they're able to put that double quotation mark inside of there. Now the same goes for the single symbol as well. So if we try to put that inside of a string where we're using a single to create the string, then we get the same exact error. But if we want to put that in a string where we use a double quotation mark, that's perfectly fine. Now when it comes to using backticks, there's actually a big update on Roblox that made these incredibly useful and we'll cover that at the end of this video. But for 100% of the time, I would recommend using double quotations. You're almost never going to find a scenario where double quotations will not actually work for you. And the only times that you'll use backticks is when you realize the advantage that you get. But even with that advantage, you still could have done the exact same thing with the double quotation method. Now, when we're talking about the number type, the number type is simply a number. It could be any number, including both whole numbers and decimals. It could also be a negative number as well. So that type should be really simple to understand. Then we have the Boolean type, which is definitely a little bit less straightforward. So a Boolean can have two values. It can either be true or false. Now these are used to make decisions and very commonly in conditional statements in our code. So for example, in our game, it could be really common that we actually have a variable called is player alive and the value of this would be a boolean so it would either be true or false. Now like I said, booleans are a little bit less straightforward and in your head you might not be able to paint the pictures as to when you would actually use this or how you would use this, but trust me, once we get a little bit further along with this video, it'll be so much easier for you to understand how useful booleans are and where you can actually use them. Now the last type that we're going to be covering for right now is actually the nil type. Nil literally means nothing. Now, if you don't actually set the value of a variable, it is automatically nil. So look at our empty box variable up here. The empty box variable and the nil variable both have the exact same value, even though we did not set a value for the empty box. Both of these are equal to nil because neither of them have anything inside of them. Like I said, you can literally think of it as something does not exist here because you aren't storing anything inside of it. Now, again, that might be hard for you to understand when would I actually use nil? Why would I ever want to use this. It'll take a little bit longer to understand this, but you'll definitely be able to wrap your head around. Now we'll talk about a couple of different ways that you can use the different types of variables. When it comes to strings, we're actually able to combine them. So I'm going to create a brand new variable called combine string, and we're going to combine this string variable with this string to variable. And how we're going to do this is we're going to set the value of this variable to those two variables being combined. So we're going to say string variable dot dot, and then we're going to say string to variable. So now when we combine these two strings, this right here is what the value of combine string would be set to. This is the string right here. Now this might be made more confusing because of these included symbols in the string. So let me go ahead and actually remove them. So now that I've removed this double and single quotation marks from those strings, it should be easier to understand. So now that we've combined these strings, this is what the final string would actually look like. Now in my opinion, this looks a little ugly because we don't actually have a space between these two strings and that's usually what you would want. So if we want to add another string to this, we can actually do that by using the periods once again and then we just insert that string directly into there. So 
we've created a new string right here and then we've added a space and then we're combining the string variable with this string and then we're also combining this variable along with that as well. So now what the final string would actually look like is this is a string, the space would be included and then string two variable would once again display this is a string. So this right here is literally what the value of combined string would look like. Now there's another way to combine strings and that's by actually using backticks. So we're going to say combined string two and we're going to set that equal to something and this time we're actually going to create a string so we're going to start that off by using backticks. Now to combine it the exact same way we did here what we're going to do is create surrounding curly braces and then inside of here we're going to put the string variable. Now after that instead of using two periods we're just going to add our space right here because remember what we're doing right here is basically creating a brand new string so anything that we put inside of here would be included with that. Then after we add the space we'll add the string to variable. So once again the value of this string would look exactly like this. So when you create a string using backticks you're able to insert variables directly inside of there while you're still creating your string itself. So for instance I can continue to add more to this string I can say this is an example and I can just add a couple more words right onto that string while easily adding our variables inside of it as well. And once again just to give you more clarification that's what the string would look like right now. Okay so that's string combination and next we have number math. Now when it comes to creating a variable you are able to do math with variables and you're even able to do math while setting the value of a variable as well. So we have two variables right here. The first variable is called player coins and this is how many coins the player has in our game and we're just saying they have 100 coins. Now this player actually wants to purchase an item from our shop and the cost of that item in our shop is 50 coins. Now although this is unusual and when you're programming you wouldn't use this direct math exactly I'm just showing you an example of how to do math. Now we want to let this transaction go through so we want to actually subtract the item cost from the amount of coins the player has. So we can say player coins equals player coins minus item cost. So now the value of player coins would then be set to 50 because 100 minus 50 is of course 50. Now of course there's more than subtraction. You have addition. You also have multiplication and division. You can also use parentheses while doing math and all those other things as well. But I just want to give you an example playing around with variables that are of the number type how you can actually do math with them. Next I'd like to present a conditional statement because I think this is a fair example of showing how you would create a variable and then set the value of that to a boolean using other variables. So we're going to create a new variable called can afford. And once again, this goes along with our number math example. The player is trying to purchase the item. Now I know, although in this example, we actually let the transaction go through. Let's ignore that for right now. Let's imagine that we're still writing out the script and we want to see if the player can actually afford to purchase the item they want. What we would do is we would get the amount of coins the player has and we would compare that with the cost of the item. Now, of course, you don't know how to do comparison yet, but in this example, we would use the arrow pointing towards the right, then the equal sign, and then we would type out the item cost variable name. And what we're doing is we're checking if the value of player coins is greater than or equal to the value of the item cost variable. So now remember, completely ignoring this, for example, like I'm just going to remove that entirely so that there's no confusion at all. All we're doing is literally comparing the number 100 and asking if 100 is greater than or if it's equal to the number 50. Now, of course, since 100 is greater than 50, the value of can't afford would be set to true, which is a boolean. Now, I didn't explain at all what conditional statements are, how we use them, and how important they are. They're a very core concept, which we're actually going to go over in the next episode, but I did want to include this example because I felt like it improves your understanding of how useful booleans are and where they can actually be useful at. With that being said, you should now have a basic understanding of variables. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below, join our Discord, or visit any of the resources that I linked in the description. And in the next episode, we'll be talking more about conditional statements. So after I give a shout out to all the Patreon members, I'll see you guys over there. <laughs>